Welcome. Um, we've been talking these past few weeks on worthwhile life in impossible situations. And today I am going to talk about living as lights in the dark. And mm. we're studying the book of Philippians, if you haven't noticed yet. And this, I feel like this series is encapsulated by the passage that we're going to look at today. It's Philippians 2, verse 12 to 18. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open them. me to Philippians 2, verse 12 to 18. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe, as you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So the first word in this passage got me. Yeah, the, the first word is therefore. But if you, if you look at um, Ben's sermon last week and Logan's sermon the week before that, they talk about Christ and the attitude of Christ and how Christ was willing to humble himself and empty himself and to get your attention and to get my attention. And so this passage starts with the word therefore because in light of what Christ has done, in light of everything that he's given for us, Paul encourages the Philippians to be lights in the dark. And I was thinking, oh, lights in the dark. Oh, be light. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a new idea. I feel like I've heard this before. Who proposed that idea? Lo and behold, Jesus. Uh, in Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So, all of this talk about light and darkness reminds me of December 2006. At that time, I had only been in the U.S. for four months. And of course, of course, there was this big windstorm that resulted in no electricity. And I feel like we take light for granted. Like we have all these fluorescent lights, neon lights, we have lamps, we have cell phone lights, <laughs> yes, um, Christmas lights. Um, I had my apartment decorated with Christmas lights for a whole year. <laughs> but that December, um, actually that Friday was the last day of exams. And like it was dark, no lights, no whatsoever. And I remember I had friends that had to take uh, an, a Christian thought exam in the library in the dark and they were like huddled to windows <laughs> trying to find light so that they can read their exams and actually do well in their exams. But you know, it's during the day because we have this big, well sometimes, we have this big thing in the sky called the sun that like, <laughs> light and uh, give us light and make us be able to do all these things without electricity. But while of being an international student, I had to stay in the dorms when everyone else was gone at night. So it was dark. It was actually pitch black. And um, I, I, I've always been very proud of being like self-sufficient. Oh, I can do things by myself. I can be alone. That's fine. Uh, yeah, when I'm in the dorms and uh, on that whole floor, there's only two people. And 
it was pitch black. No emergency lights, nothing. I'm like, awesome. Anna, where are you? <laughs> um, yeah, Anna's my roommate. She's still stuck with me, even till now. But, yeah, there was, like, and when we were asking, like, the security people, they said, oh, yeah, it won't, it probably won't come on until tomorrow. I'm like, oh, great. So what to do? Like, I like entertainment, so no TV, uh, no nothing, can't really, like, even if I, if I can't really play music, my laptop was out of battery, and I'm like, oh, this is great. And, of course, I decided to use, like, this, like, my cell phone light, and read in the dark. I read a thriller novel, which is not good for reading in the dark. And so I was slightly scared, and uh, every little thing, every little sound uh, sort of freaks me out. I, I screamed a lot of times. <laughs> Anyways, Paul described the generation he's living in as a crooked and depraved generation. It was a dark time. It was a dark generation. As Ben <coughs> pointed out last week, they had persecution sporadically. And not only that, they had a pretty crazy emperor. It was the time of the Emperor Nero, and I was looking, I, I'm sort of a history person, um, geek, buff, whatever. <laughs> and I was looking at his life and how like all this drama in his life, his life looks, at, looks and sounds like a thriller movie. Lots of drama, lots of craziness, paranoid ambitions, and crazy stuff. And I was trying to imagine how the Philippians were living amidst these times of like persecution and not knowing whether the emperor is, you know, having his good day or bad day. And I felt like we can totally use these words crooked, depraved, and dark to explain our generation today. For example, I like to read wacky news, just weird news, and this one time I looked uh, up wacky news from AP, and you know, as you probably have known, Apple just came out with the iPad, and I kind of want the iPad a little bit badly. <laughs> but apparently some people want it so bad that they would steal. And this, apparently this guy went to the Apple store to get an iPad for somebody else. And uh, he was holding the iPad and a thief came and just like grabbed it from him. And I don't know what he did, but he tore this, the pinky off of <gasps> the other guy. I'm like, dude, it's an iPad. It's not even a laptop. It, like, you can see videos on it, but that's about it. Um, and who would do such a thing? Like, a lot of times we, we think things like that, but if we read the news every day, there are things that happen that are beyond explanation. We sit there and we read all these things and say, like, what's the matter with them? Like, what is wrong with these people? What the heck? I, I grew up in Indonesia and ten, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, there's this riot. And uh, it, was, it was very heartbreaking for me because there's a lot of political unrest, but not only that, they took it upon uh, some minorities, and they, especially the the, uh, the Christians and Chinese Indonesians, and during that time, all three days of the riots, people were abused, people were burnt alive, and like I see these things, and I heard of these things, and I have heard, I've heard stories after stories. Lots of them um, immigrated to the U.S. and uh, went to get an asylum visa just because they, they feel that it's not, no longer safe for them to live in Indonesia. And things like that happen in the world. Why? Because we're living in a crooked and depraved generation. We're living in a time that's dark. 